pleasure to be here at Climosphere today. As you must know, today is the International Day of Forests, and we are going to discuss the threats that the Amazon rainforest faces from climate change. So to help us understand what is going on and how to avoid a disaster, I have here with me really special guests. They will introduce themselves to you, so please go ahead. Carlos Hito, you are the first. Okay, thank you, Afra. Thank you, Climosphere, for putting this hangout uh, on. And it's a very important day. It's, as Afra said, International Day of Forest, but also it's also the day of the 20th anniversary of uh, the Climate Change Convention, the UNFCCC Convention. So it's, it's very special uh, and very urgent to speak about the climate change in the Amazon, what could happen and I'm happy to join you. I'm Carlos Hito, head of uh, Executive Secretary of Four Climate Observatory, which is a uh, network of Brazilian NGOs uh, and social movements working on climate agenda with a special focus on, on public policies in the country, but also taking a close look into international negotiations and how both relate. Uh, I'm glad to, to be with you. Thank you so much, Carlos. Please, Fabio, introduce yourself. Hello, thank you very much, Afra, and thank you very much, Climosphere. Uh, it's great to be here with you. It's great to, to see you, Carlos. Uh, I'm, I'm Vice President for Conservation International, uh, which is an NGO that works in around 40 countries in the planet. I, I am responsible for our, our work in, the, uh, in, in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. That includes 10 countries. And one of our priority geographies is precisely the Amazon. Uh, in the Amazon, out of the eight Amazonian countries, we have uh, offices in seven of them. So it's a pleasure to, to be with you here to talk about the Amazon. I'm also an author for the uh, Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, IPCC, and the Brazilian Panel of Climate Change. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be fun to talk a bit about climate with you guys. In Forest Day, I'm sitting here from my window here, I can see the mm -hmm. Chifuca Forest in Rio, so it's a good day to celebrate the forests. The Atlantic Forest is important as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe in the next minutes we will have another guest joining us, but let's start. The first question I would like you to, to answer is, what are the threats that the Amazon rainforest faces from climate change? Who wants to start, Fabio? Well, I think uh, some of the main threats they are they are related to the changes in the land use of the Amazon. Uh, I think the expansion of of agriculture in the continent is one of the main drivers. About ninety five percent of deforestation in Latin America, which includes the Amazon, comes from from agriculture, and of course there are a number of infrastructural projects, uh, including roads and uh, energy infrastructure, that are going to be essential for the development of the region, but uh, they have to be undertaken in a way so as to maintain the natural resources that are out there. And I think this this is some of the main challenges. And this, whatever results in deforestation is going to impact climate, and uh, it has a global impact, but it also has an impact locally in the Amazon. Mm -hmm, I see. Carlos, do you want to, to continue? <laughs> yes, yes, please. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, well, uh, if we look into the, the, the information generated by the Brazilian panel on climate change and also the, the, uh, these, uh, the report we, which will come out next week according to the, the draft that we, we could uh, have access to uh, uh, we along the century we could expect a, a huge change in temperature in the Amazon. Uh, depending on the scenarios, the temperature could uh, go up in the region, bet something between five and seven uh, degrees Celsius, which is could uh, represent and it could cause uh, significant changes in in the region, including uh, possibly, according to the different models and scenarios. Uh, changes in the uh, rainfall patterns in some regions as the southeastern Amazon where uh, uh, along this century you could have uh, a decrease of uh, rainfall something between 20 and 30 percent 
in some regions. But also, if you look now what's going on in the Western Amazon, in Acre and, and Rondônia states in Brazil, mm -hmm. and also in Bolivia, the floods that we have there, we could expect uh, an, a more extreme weather events like this. Uh, and uh, in the future, and this, as as we are seeing right now, is true. The fact that livelihoods of millions and millions of people, if this turns uh, into a, the new normal for the region, so mm -hmm. it's certain that we address this issue. This combination of climate change and also land use, it's it's, it's uh, what turns the, the scenarios uh, w even worse. So according to what you say. Uh, if we don't act now, could the Amazon be wiped out? If so, when could this happen? Do you know that? It's possible to answer that. Yeah, I think, well, some of the forecasting indicates, well, we currently have, when you think of the whole Amazon, somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of the Amazon has been deforested, right? right. There are a number of modeling exercises that, that predict that if deforestation in the Amazon goes beyond 20 percent, and in some other models showing that if it goes beyond 30 percent of the total cover, the Amazon is going to reach uh, uh, what is called a tipping point. It's a point of, of no return. And from that point on, the Amazon could, could look drier, could savanize. Mm -hmm. The uh, savanization of the Amazon, of course, would have major impact not only in the Amazon itself, but in the global climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the forecasts indicate that if deforestation of the Amazon continues business as usual, mm -hmm. probably by 2050 we would be uh, uh, having somewhere around 38 to 40 percent of the Amazon deforested, and that would be well within uh, this scenario of having reached the tipping point and conditions becoming drier. So we have, uh, you know, we have the uh, action has to be pretty urgent in halting deforestation in the region. I see. Carlos, is there anything else you want to say about that? Yes, really briefly. As, uh, as Fabio said, this is it's an urgent matter, and so we need to address uh, locally and in the re regionally the the question of deforestation, addressing um, how to deal with the drivers of deforestation, um, including measures as public policies, um, for fostering sustainable development in the region. We need to change the, the model of development in the region, which is now driving deforestation. Uh, but also, we need to 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 bear in mind that uh, uh, we need to. Um, as a whole, reduce uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions really significantly along the, the next decades, because this this combination of deforestation and climate change could turn the process could could uh, lead us into a sort of vicious cycle uh, in the region, but also globally. Because uh, right now the Amazon uh, forests they can, uh, in average, take a lot of carbon from out of from the atmosphere. Uh, of course, this varies a lot along the years, and years which are drier, uh, it can be different from uh, wetter years. But uh, uh, if uh, we don't stop, if we don't halt the deforestation, and if we don't reduce greenhouse gas emissions, this would uh, soon turn the Amazon uh, the size of a sink, or, or not a sink, but we're, we're taking out a lot of carbon from the atmosphere, and it's and uh, with a huge stock of uh, carbon in the forest, also turning the, the, the Amazon forest as a, a, a huge source of greenhouse gas to the atmosphere, so which, which would lead us into an uh, even worse scenario. Okay, I see. And you two mentioned some activities that are impacting the Amazon, like agriculture, for instance. How uh, can these uh, activities be replaced with more eco-friendly alternatives? How do you think that could be done there? I think so. Yes. Uh, if we if we look well, we, we we have been looking at some data within our group at Conservation International, and we see now that uh, nearly well, these are rough numbers, right? But nearly forty-five percent of the Amazon territory is within protected areas or indigenous territories, right. which, is, which is good news. Nearly half of it is, uh, is protected. 
So we, we have to make sure that this protection remains and that there's fi financing to, ki to keep protection uh, at good standards. On the other hand, I mentioned that there's about 20% of the Amazon that has already been deforested. Some of these areas are very productive, but mm. most of them are not. Mm -hmm. So how to turn a productive deforested areas in the Amazon productive this could make sure that uh, uh, there is, since the, it, these areas have been already deforested, perhaps a, a high-scale productivity should take place in, this play, in these areas. Now, if you add 45 of protected and 20 with deforested, there's 35 left, right? And the 35% that is left is where the challenge remains. Mm -hmm. These are forested areas that uh, the vocation of these areas has not been defined by governments yet. So these areas, they are basically up for grabs. So I think that uh, defining a policy for this gray land in the Amazon, I think that's what's going to make a difference. If we make sure that productivity carries on in the deforested areas, if we make sure that the green areas and the gray areas, so to speak, the, uh, the protected areas and, and uh, these lands with no vocation defined, if in these areas we keep the forest there and uh, we focus on, on schemes uh, to product natural products such as açaí, castanha do Pará, there are so many examples, tourism, mm -hmm. the huge opportunity that we are not tapping on. I think that we can uh, not only maintain the Amazonian forests intact, but we can considerably uh, increase the standards of life in the region. So you don't need to close this area for the tourism or for some activity, but you can do some activities that are eco-friendly, right? Like you said, yeah. acai and castanha. Yeah. I think I think closing for you know old style conservation, you, mm -hmm. you put the fence around it and protect. That does not work in Latin America at all, let alone in the Amazon. Uh, uh, conservation has to be reconciled with human development and uh, human well-being. Okay, so we need to, to deal with the forest and not close, close it to everybody, right? Carlos, do you want to add something? Yes, absolutely. I fully endorse what uh, Fabio just said. And, um, we need to take a look uh, and look into the Amazon as a landscape where we have uh, all these patches of uh, forest, protected forests, and uh, uh, areas where we have different economic activities and uh, to really implement um, a, a new mode of development which looks into the landscaping and, and try to turn the whole landscape as uh, a combination, uh, under a combination of conservation and, and sustainable development uh, uh, policies. It's really important uh, that uh, we, we avoid uh, having, trying to uh, make uh, to turn the, 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 the conservation economic vi economically viable uh, in order to compete with, with traditional agriculture. In Brazil we have uh, a program called Low Carbon Agriculture which is part of the, the uh, climate policy that Brazil has put in place. But uh, the amount of money which is uh, invested in low carbon agriculture in Brazil is about 1% or 1.5 percent in comparison to, to the whole amount of money that is invested in one year, along one year, in traditional agriculture, as subsidies, finances, uh, uh, tax ex exemptions, uh, and and all the the uh, uh, and a series of uh, um, um, of measures that uh, force the uh, deforestation to to increase the production and to increase the productivity. But uh, right now we, we don't have uh, the perspective to have the whole Brazilian agriculture under uh, a low carbon pathway a long time. And we, we need that. And so uh, the conservation and agriculture and other economic activities under sustainable practices uh, are economically much better than traditional agriculture which destroy and put the, the, the forest uh, on the ground. Of course, so there's a lot of work to do in this area and yes. I'd like to talk now about other subjects. Uh, we all know that the Amazon forest is very rich, right? It's one of the most biodiverse areas in the entire world and it's home to 10% of the species known on Earth. 
So uh, I think it's important to discuss what kind of effect will climate change have on these species and on the future of their homes. Uh, could extin extinction be a real possibility for some of the Amazon species? I think Fabio can start answering that one. Uh, yes, it's a good question, and uh, I think it points out to, uh, to, a, to I would say, a gap that we have in the science right now. The, there's not so many studies for Amazonian species on how their niche and their, uh, how, how, how their survival is going to be looking like under climate change scenarios. We, we, uh, there, there's already... A, a, a number of, stu of, of studies for, for tropical species, but not so many for, for the Amazon. But I think what, that what we could safely say is that if the Amazon savannizes uh, under this big deforestation scenario that I mentioned earlier, a savanna mm -hmm. in being a, a much drier place, it's, ex it's, it's to be expected that uh, uh, significant proportions of, of species in the Amazon may uh, may decline, extinguish, or simply change their distribution. So it is a, a real threat, considering that there's still a lot to be learned about the Amazon and about the potential that this, these species that we have there have. If you think of, of, of pharmaceuticals alone and for potential cure of diseases, we may find ourselves losing species without even knowing what they're useful for. Mm -hmm. So, it is a, so we, it need, is a yeah. Yeah. we need to study more, even to discover more species there, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, th this, this proportion that you mentioned of 10% of, of, okay. of the species of the planet is a good one. Uh, but uh, that includes a number of species that are still unknown to science. <laughs> if you get mm -hmm. to know, <laughs> these numbers may even change. Mm -hmm. Carlos, do you like to, to add something? Yes, please. Um, will you, uh, Fabio, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it seems to me that the habitat loss has, is already driving some, some species and possibly some unknown species into uh, uh, significant loss of, uh, of number of individuals, in terms of number of individuals. In, and uh, we, the Amazon is uh, has this huge biodiversity, and a lot of uh, species in the Amazon region are not uh, are, are are rare, with few individuals, and um, a, a restricted, uh, limited uh, distribution. And in some areas, we could be already facing some some sort of uh, extinction of a species, including those that we we don't even know. And climate change. Who this this combination of both so of, uh, of deforestation and of forest degradation and climate change could who uh, uh, once again turn things even even worse for for the, bio, the, the biodiversity in the Amazon region. It is true. So yeah, Carlos, it's a good point. Okay. So Carlos, if we do, uh, if we continue with the business as, as usual and don't address climate change now. What do you think uh, that the Amazon will look like 10 years from now, for instance? Or how well, can maybe, we say about the future? Yeah. Maybe in 10 years, in terms of climate change, it, uh, uh, we, would, we could see along these next 10 years more extreme weather events and uh, more forest destruction. And, uh, but the, the, uh, the, climate, the, the change in the climate system would affect the, the Amazon along the, uh, the, the next decades and, and possibly the, the worst uh, in, impacts would be seen uh, along the few decades uh, from now. But uh, I would say for sure that, that well, if you consider the last 10 years we had at least two significant, uh, very severe droughts in the Amazon region, we are yeah. now facing one among a, a few a huge uh, floods in the region, uh, and these, uh, well, this is an, could uh, be the new normal for the region, an, an, an era of uh, extremes. This is, uh, in, let's say, in 10 years, but along the de decades, as Fabio pointed out uh, earlier in this, this, this chat, uh, we could go through this this savanization process in it. So this this would have a, a dramatic effect on on the, the biodiversity in the region. 
Fabio, do you want to add something? To yeah, well, I, I, I'm thinking here of the, how, I would, how I would like to see the Amazon 20, 30 years from now, and I would like to see an Amazon with zero net deforestation or zero expansion of mm. deforestation. And I would like to see mm -hmm. no poverty and, and no inequalities there. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we continue business as usual with the current development paradigm, we are not going to get there. It's going to be more deforestation, and with deforestation, conflicts arise, as we've been seeing some parts of, of, of the Amazon, sometimes with indigenous people, sometimes with local people that live there. Now there's all the, the debates around the, the, the building of hydro dams, and there are you know, different populations there are just not happy with that. And if mm -hmm. our, our current development paradigm is maintained, uh, conflicts are going to be more and more intense in the region. So what I hope for in the next 20 or 30 years, peace and zero deforestation. And Afra, if I can add just a quick so, point. Uh, uh, we got please. to remember a couple of years ago, in 2007, a group of uh, Brazilian NGOs launched a, uh, um, uh, a caucus for zero deforestation in the Amazon. And uh, who put the economic uh, uh, rationale behind a plan to, to go to reach zero net deforestation was a group of people working together with the, the now president of a Brazilian Development Bank, Luciano Coutinho. And so it's, it's, is it possible? I also agree and fully endorse what Fabio said. We hope and we expect and we, we, can, we could see with the political will uh, a significant change and we could go to zero net deforestation in the Amazon region. This, this is uh, absolutely feasible, but this demands a political will. Economically is viable, uh, politically is viable, morally is, is uh, an obligation. Yes, and sometimes, as Fabio said, we forgot that there are also people living there in the Amazon. It's not just animals and the, the trees, né? there are people yeah. also living in there, and they also will have these impacts of climate change. So mm -hmm. it's important to deal with the, the people and, and the biodiversity, right, Fabio? Yeah, very much so. I think that's, uh, well, you know, we are, re as usual, when we talk about climate change, we're mentioning many bad things and potentially bad scenarios. But I think that uh, some, there are some good news out there, too, and uh, on the realm of what is now called ecosystem-based adaptation to climate change, I think there are some good success stories where uh, uh, natural resources are maintained and at the same time people in given communities have their lives improved. So this combination of conservation of nature with uh, improvement of human well-being, this is already beginning to, to occur in different parts of the Amazon. Uh, my impression is that they are oftentimes very small scale and I think that one of the challenges for, for, for scientists, for activists, and especially for policymakers, is to get some of these good models uh, and bring them to scale, transform them into policies for states, for, 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 for countries, uh, and to spread uh, good alternatives and good solutions for sustainable development in the Amazon across the region as a whole, and not specifically to one point. We have to go from project level to policy level. That's, I think, the main change that has to happen with some of the solutions that are being raised in the Amazon. So, Carlos, uh, uh, we see there, there, there is hope, right? We just need to, to address the, the issue and have goodwill, and politics also need to act, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, well, there is a, a yeah. lot of win-win strategies that could be put in place. And uh, I'm happy that Paulo is, is joining us right now uh, to yes. the debate even more exciting. Uh, and uh, well, there is hope. Well, uh, <laughs> we have all the uh, the a lot of uh, scientific bases. We have economic information, and uh, we have, as Fabio pointed, uh, we have several uh, uh, initiatives which are being put in place in the, in the Amazon region, which uh, uh, bring us hope, a lot of hope, and that, but. Uh, we demand, we, dep we depend a lot of on, on political will and decisions to be made at the policy level in order to change the things that they are going through. Uh, 
We have been re uh, so successfully along the years reducing the forestation in the Amazon, but the deforestation rate, rates are still high, and there's a huge challenge to keep this going down and down and down a long time. And, in, and, uh, and also, we, need, we have a huge challenge to reduce emission, greenhouse gas emissions worldwide in order to avoid the worst uh, scenarios for, for the region. But, uh, well, if the, the, the sen this sense of urgency is is on, uh, on the table of the decision makers, we can make it happen. Okay, Carlos, thank you so much. Uh, I'm happy to see that Paul Artasha has joined, joining us. Please, Paul, uh, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, please. For the delay, I was uh, stuck in traffic. Oh, that's a very common mm -hmm. issue here. So basically, mm -hmm. I am Paul Artasha, <laughs> professor of Institute of Physics University of, University of Sao Paulo, and I work on atmospheric issues in the Amazon Basin for the last 30 years, and I am right now the chairman of the large-scale biosphere atmosphere experience in Amazonia, the LGA experience. Mm -hmm. so basically, I'm, I'm here to help whatever I can. Thank you so much. I think uh, you can talk a little bit about the, the, the science that is uh, the research that you are doing on, on the Amazon and uh, the message that you think it's important on this International Day of Forest. Yeah, basically, you know, yeah, we are doing, we are doing, uh, oh, let me increase the, the sound because people are, sorry. Uh, okay, I can, I can. Now I can hear you, yeah. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. But basically, we are running uh, the LBA experiment. It's a large scale and long term experiment in Amazonia that we are operating about 15 uh, carbon flux towers all over the several different ecosystems in Amazonia. I'm trying to understand how the natural forest uh, works, how is the role of carbon cycling in Amazonia, uh, including deforestation including climate change effects, including all the social economic drivers that uh, are related to deforestation and carbon losses or uh, absorption by the Amazon forest. So basically, Amazonia plays an extremely important role in controlling climate, not just regionally, but also globally, and of course, holds the largest uh, terrestrial carbon uh, storage in, in the world, in terrestrial ecosystems, and any small change in the carbon storage by Amazonia can make a huge difference in the, in the global climate issue. So that's one of the reasons why Amazonia is absolutely critical to maintain the equilibrium of the global climate system. So, uh, if uh, climate change impacts the Amazon, it also impacts all over the world, right, Paul? Yes. It can, yeah. we so can impact every a, other region. Yeah, Amazon is, is a particularly sensitive region for climate change because of the dependence between the functioning of the forest and the global hydrological cycle. So, the forest has a very critical relationship with the, uh, the climate as we can easily observe in the droughts of 2005 and 2010 that influenced very significantly the, uh, the carbon balance in Amazonia. So Amazonia is a kind of a thermometer for global change in the tropics. And it's a very sensitive uh, ecosystem to climate change. So we had the last two most, most important droughts uh, of the century in only the last 10 years. And we see uh, an increase in floods like we are having right now over the Rondonia and water. Is, I, I came yesterday from Manaus. The water is going up very fast in Manaus. People are really getting uh, worried about that. So that means that Amazonia, in terms of climate extremes, is a very, very sensitive region. So this is a, a, a key parameter because if you lost only 5 or 10% of the carbon is, that is being stored right now in Amazonia to the global atmosphere, concentrations of CO2 
can increase it very fast because the turnover time of Amazonia is much faster than tropical forests, and it can increase it very significantly from the very high concentration we're observing right now of 400 ppm, uh, even to 450 or 500 ppm in a matter of a few decades. So this is a critical reason why you should take a lot of care of the Amazonian ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paulo. And do you think we can reverse the impact of climate change uh, in the Amazon? It's possible to reverse these impacts? You don't, re you don't reverse these uh, effects. For instance, you know, uh, as soon as a forest is transformed in a pasture area, you know, we can take centuries or even more than that to get back to the original forest. So basically, the best strategy is not to, to think about to reverse uh, deforestation trends, but actually prevent them of happening mm -hmm. as strongly as possible. And I think if this is possible. This does not cost a lot of money. We have the te techniques to do that, but we need to make the political will uh, to do mm -hmm. that from all levels of government, from municipality, from the states, and also from the federal government. Everybody should act, not only one person or one government, but everybody together, right? Oh, for sure. You have to involve NGO, you have to involve local government, you have, you have to involve local politicians, you know, federal policy, because in some of the cases, are really, uh, some crimes are, are, have been occurring against the forest, you know, that's actually against the whole Brazilian country. So basically, we have to change the mentality in Amazonia and try to uh, keep the forest as much as possible and to learn how to explore the richness of the forest without destroying it. Great. Thank you so much, Paulo. We are reaching the end of our discussion now, and I would like you uh, to, to make your final considerations. Please, Carlos, you can start. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Afra. Thank you, Fabio and Paolo, for uh, uh, it's just an ho honor to, to, to be part of this debate. We, all, we always think it's not too, too long. It's mm -hmm. short, especially to, to speak about the Amazon and climate change. There's a lot, a lot to say. But I, I would like to, to leave this, this, the room here, this chat room here, the hangout, with a message of urgency. We can make it happen. Uh, as Paolo said, as Fabio said, and as I, I have said, we, we need political. We, we need uh, 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 the willingness of for different groups of people uh, to change the, the situation, the trends in the Amazon region. But it's feasible. It is possible to halve deforestation, and also it, it's also possible globally to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, not only from deforestation, but from energy sector as a whole. But we depend a lot uh, from the political will, and uh, we are in a window of opportunity which is not too uh, too big. Uh, we have a couple of years to to um, make the decision that will drive us into uh, um, a global reduction in, the, in, in, in greenhouse emissions, and whilst we have uh, a few years to halve the forestation the Amazon before it starts entering in, uh, in this uh, uh, limits in between these limits that could turn the the, 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 the force and the, uh, uh, really susceptible to to climate change and and to this vicious cycles that could turn into a different world. But we can make it happen. I see some hope. <laughs> Great. Fabio, please. Thank you, Afra. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure meeting you and also seeing Carlos and, and Paulo and, and, uh, and talking to, to his audience at Climosphere. It's been a pleasure. And I, I, I do agree with Carlos. I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, we have, as I said earlier, 45% of the Amazon, of all countries that it covers, are now inside protected areas. We have to make sure that these protected areas remain so, and there is enough investment for these areas to, mm -hmm. to become of use and to generate wealth to the people that live either inside them or in the surroundings. And we have to make sure that the remaining 55% of the Amazon, 20% of it is already deforested, that we have the best practices possible. I believe that there are already many solutions on the ground, solutions created by local people, solutions sometimes supported by, 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 
by science, by NGO work, by local governments, and these good solutions, they have to reach scale, they have to be uh, turned into policies and they have to be replicated across the region. Uh, we have to, to, to understand that the Amazon is both uh, very important for the, the people who live there and uh, important for the planet as a whole. So it has to be treated uh, uh, with, with much care and, uh, and, and with, with wisdom. We have to have a long-term perspective there rather than the short-term one. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, Paulo, would you like to, to make your final comment? Yes, uh, I like it very much the positive tone from Carlos and Fabio, you know, because that's very important. Because every mm -hmm. time we talk ab about Amazonia, it's just about destruction, mm -hmm. you know, and not looking forward to into the future with a positive view. And that is very important because, you know, you, there is one way to look for the 18% of the forest that was destroyed. And the, one, the way to do that is, okay, don't forget that 72% of the tropical forest is today exactly like when Cabral arrived in Brazil. And that is the point. So how to develop a good policy and implement them on long-term policies, you know, to preserve the 72% of the forest that's exactly like 500 or 1,000 years ago. So that is the challenge for all Brazilians, and it's possible, it does not cost too much money, and it's feasible, but mm -hmm. we need a coherent work between government, NGO, the enterprise people, you know, to find a sustainable way to explore the forest without destroying. And it's possible and does not cost a lot of money, so I hope that the message here uh, from all the participants is very, very clear. It's possible and let's do it. That's great to hear. We have many challenges, but yes, it is possible. So let's do it, right? Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a, a very complex issue, uh, subject. It's hard to explain, but you did it very well. So thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to all. Thank you. Thank you.